I love throwing on the wheel. That's what brings me back again and again. A 10-year resident of the Roaring Fork Valley, Allegheny Meadows received his Master's of Fine Art in Ceramics from Alfred University in New York, apprenticed in Japan under the celebrated potter Takashi Nagazato, and is a former artist-in-residence at the Anderson Ranch Art Center. Allegheny's recent work explores the influence of nature, time, function, and the human body in his ceramic works. It's that process that, that nature creates for him that I'm trying to get to. When a bird walks across the beach on the wet sand, there's a certain track that's left, and then on the dry sand, it's a different track. And then a few minutes later or 12 hours later, the tide's gonna come in and wash all that away. And I'm interested in the way that patterns in nature, they're constantly changing, but they never repeat. And so it's a similar type of thing that I'm after in nature, where it's, it's that process that, that nature creates for him that I'm trying to get to. It's the way that a, the snow might load up right on the ridge up on Highlands Bowl and the cornice will form and the way that the light will hit that. Uh, I think about that. And there's this great, great field just around the corner from us. It's this horse ranch and my most favorite thing this winter was to come around the corner and see it in the morning before a, a horse had walked across this field. And it was like this big bowl. And it's almost like one of the bowls that I make uh, before it's tracked and just the way the light and the clouds move across it. The glazes that I choose have to do with glazes and colors and forms that I find in nature. So this might be the sky or might be the water. Uh, a glaze that's transparent like this might be looking down through a pool of water. And then down inside this cup, it's like contours on a map. And so the top of this is a round circle and if it's full of an opaque liquid, as I drink that, it's sort of cataloging and marking time, the way that flowers in spring and different things will mark the seasons. And so I'm interested in how this piece can interact with time and with the use so then as someone drinks about halfway down, it constricts a little bit and there's a little waste in there. And then when they get all the way to the bottom, it's a flower shape. And if it's an opaque liquid, you know, as it goes through these sort of contours and these horizons, uh, it's sort of these different markers of time. And I don't want it to copy nature, but to have people maybe think about nature. I make functional pottery and functional meaning that I want people to use it. You know, like this cup is one I made quite a few years ago. And the way it relates to the body, you know, these forms that are in here are roughly uh, the size of my mouth. And so there's, with the cup especially, there's this intimate relationship to the body. Uh, something that's made to be held in the hand. Uh, the textures, the intrigue of it. The process for me starts with the wet clay. And in that time, I'm thinking about what forms I'm going to be making. Because like to make a cup, I need a small, you know, maybe three quarters or a pound of clay, which is maybe the size of a small orange. And then it also needs to be a certain softness. And if I'm going to make a plate, it's six pounds of clay, maybe two large grapefruits together. And it needs to be even softer because just physically, the shape of making a plate requires much more of a pressure down on the pot. Or if I'm going to make a tall, like a pitcher, it needs to be very firm clay because pitchers have to be very thin because once they're full of water, you know, a gallon of water weighs about seven, eight pounds. So if the pitcher weighs four or five pounds as well, it's going to be really heavy for somebody to lift. And I want the work, a utilitarian work I think needs to function in those ways. And once those things are figured out, then the expressiveness uh, happens on the potter's wheel. After throwing on the wheel, the pieces dry. Most of them are worked throughout the stages of dryness. 
That goes into the kiln for glaze firing. We fire to about 2300 degrees. Yeah. That firing process takes two, three days. And then afterwards, the pieces are finished. Basically what I'm doing in the kiln is mimicking the geologic process. The art scene is why, a lot of it's why I live here. It's a very vibrant art scene that, that's on the level of, of a huge city, and yet I can live in nature. I don't have to live out in suburbia. I can live in nature, I can experience the things in nature, I can ski and hike do the things that I might be able to do in a small rural town and yet I also have you know, access to not just Aspen anymore but throughout the valley. I feel like it's a really exciting time in ceramics. A lot of people are reinventing. There's, sort of, there's rules in a certain sense that it needs to be, at least in, for functional work, it still needs to be functional and so it needs to hold water but beyond that it's a, it's a wide open terrain right now.